Okay, straight up. I'm pretty angry right now. Now I'm gonna give a disclaimer before we get into the topic of this video. I am not a professional when it comes to law. This is just my opinion based off of my research. Now let's get into it. So last night, Lizzie's mom was over and we were just sitting as a family and we were like, let's watch some YouTube videos. So I pull up YouTube, I quickly check Creator Studio and there's a little notification right at the top of my YouTube studio that says, Canada's Online Streaming Act, Bill C-11, could affect your ability to reach your audience and earning potential as a YouTube creator. My heart sunk in that moment because I know exactly what Bill C-11 is. Now, to give you a quick update, this is the updated version from Bill C-10. I've heard about this for the last couple of years, but it went kind of quiet, and some of the things that were talked about in that bill were not that concerning, but they've updated it, and they're kind of sneaky now, and now, it impacts us very, very much. So much so that it could impact where we live just because of our career choice. Isn't that a fun situation to be thrown into? So you start getting into this moment where you're like fight or flight mode because your ability to make money, your ability to provide money to other people who work for this YouTube channel and everything else, your entire career is at risk because of the government. Okay, so I think context is very important. What is Bill C-11? Why is this even important to someone like me? And why am I telling you about this? Why am I making a whole YouTube video about this? Bill C-11 is a new bill that puts websites like YouTube and any streaming services under the authority of the CRTC, the Canadian Radio and Television and Telecommunications Commission. So what that essentially means is there's new nationalistic rules around which content gets seen and which content gets buried. Buried, bur buried, buried. Which content dies because it's not Canadian enough. This will impact every single streaming site. We're talking Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Netflix, Crave, Disney, anything that shows you content in Canada it impacts all of that. Now, the reason why this whole bill was created in the first place is because the Canadian government say, we don't see enough Canadian content. Our culture is at risk. Let me explain why this is not good for content creators like myself. So essentially what this bill means is that the algorithm will start feeding Canadian creators to more Canadian viewers. So let's say I make a video about cameras. Traditionally on the YouTube algorithm and how it works right now is that that video will be fed to people who are interested in that content. Content internationally, and my international audience is typically Americans. But now this video that I make about cameras is gonna be force fed to Canadian viewers who might not be interested in that content. And they're gonna be like, hey, I don't like this. Why are you showing me this? And they're not gonna click on that video probably because they're not interested in it, which means that I'm going to get less views and the algorithm's gonna go, hey, nobody likes this video that Chris made. Stop feeding it to people. And if I get less views, I make less money from Google AdSense and advertisers. So it impacts my bottom line and will impact other Canadian YouTubers bottom lines. And let's say you're not a content creator from Canada. You're just somebody that likes to watch content. Now you're just going to be force fed stuff you don't really want to see all the time because of this law. That's what's going to happen. So the whole experience is just bad for everybody. Another funny part of this whole situation is I go, okay, well, maybe I'm going to get some more Canadian viewers. That's a cool thing. But if the CRTC does not deem my content Canadian enough, they will not show it to Canadian audiences. Awesome. And how do we find out how my content is Canadian enough? I tried to look it up and be like, what does Canadian enough mean on YouTube? There's nothing there yet, but it does exist in the traditional sense for radio and television. I have friends who work in the more traditional space and they have to fill out endless forms to qualify as Canadian content creators. Does that mean that if I make a video right now, I have to now submit documentation on top of it to make sure that this video is Canadian enough for this audience so that they can hopefully push it out to Canadian people? Why? In essence, the continued success of Canadian channels could be dependent on their ability to make their content Canadian enough. Here's another reason why I'm concerned, especially from like a financial position, because this is a company it has employees and we have a lot of overhead over here. And the majority of my sponsors on this channel come from international companies, a lot of them being American companies. I would say 80% of my sponsorship on this channel does not come from Canadian companies. And that's mainly because Canadian companies just don't have enough money. We are 
a smaller group of people. We are like, what, one tenth of America? That means we have a smaller market and have less purchasing power, which means that when there's marketing ad dollars allocated to do influencer campaigns or paid media, they usually just have like one fifth the budgets that America does. And that's the reality of it. So we take on less Canadian clients and also because there's less opportunities here. Canadian companies aren't just knocking on my door all the time being like, hey, we wanna throw you money. It just doesn't happen as often as it does with the American companies. These laws most likely will mean that I am going to be less desirable to international advertisers and international clients, mainly because they don't wanna have to deal with the BS of this Canadian law. And also if they're spending American dollars and now they're getting force fed to Canadians who might not be a part of their market, then then what, what's the point of that? And the irony of this whole situation is that if I just relied on Canadian advertisers, I could not afford to live. I could not afford to pay Lucas his full-time salary, who is the editor on this channel. I could not afford to pay all the freelance people who help out on this channel. Canadian YouTubers provide jobs for people in Canada who pay taxes and provide money to the government and then use that money that they've made from that channel to spend more money in Canada. Now, I know I've talked a lot about money. It's not all about the money, but it is important for people to live. This is how we survive. And can we just be honest, if you're Canadian and you're watching this, are you like, are you feeling like you're missing out on Canadian content? Like literally if you go onto Netflix and you look up Canada, you can find all the Canadian content. It's also like force fed you there too. Like there's little sections of being like, here are the Canadian contenters, Screen Guild Award winners. I don't remember the names of it, but I know I am shown Canadian content. If I want to see it, it is available for me to click on. In a free market, we should have choice. That's it. Okay, weird jump cut. Now my wife's here. Uh, she just came into the room and we were talking about Bill C-11. She's like, oh, I was going to make a video about that. I was like, do you want to just share your thoughts right now? And she does. I'm assuming at this point that Chris has already explained it thoroughly. And what bothers me once again about this bill and many other bills and laws and decisions that have been made is once again, it's being made by a bunch of people who have no knowledge or business, in my opinion, making decisions like this because it doesn't involve you. You don't know anything about it. You're looking at the tip of the iceberg, which in this case is the fact that more Canadians are gonna see more Canadian content, which sounds good in theory, but what they don't see because they don't talk to us and they don't ask us questions about it and they don't talk to the people who actually know what's going on, the giant, rest of the iceberg underneath the water and all of the problems that this is going to cause and especially to our livelihoods and the jobs that Chris and I provide. And people may think that content creators are a joke, our jobs are not important. These people making these decisions don't understand how our business model works and how we're actually contributing to society because they don't bother to ask us. <laughs> all they're caring about is, in this case, the viewers and how it feels to be them watching the content. They don't know anything about the industry as a whole and that makes me really angry. That's all. So I think it's important to play devil's advocate. I think it's good to have two sides of this story. So back in the 1970s and 1980s, the CRTC was essentially created to regulate Canadian content so that we could maintain our culture. And I remember everyone at the time, well, I don't remember, I'm not from that era, but Jackie, Lizzie's mom, who was from that era said, everyone was really up in arms because they wanted to have the right to choose what they could see and they wanted to see the good stuff that existed. But she found out later that she was actually exposed to a lot of really great Canadian talent. And maybe this new system actually supported a lot of up and coming artists so that we could create shows like Shits Creek, which is an internationally renowned show that is Canadian. We have artists like Avril Lavigne. We have Drake. We have Shania Twain. We have Lily Singh. We have Peter McKinnon. So I guess there's potential systems in place to let this talent grow and manifest and become what it is today. But there's a good chance that this is not gonna be well executed for streaming sites. And that's just the reality of the government. We don't know how this is gonna play out. Here is what I ultimately fear, is that this will push Canadian content creators, especially YouTubers, to move to other countries that are less regulatory, more supportive, and tax friendly. That's just the reality because I'm thinking about all these things and these laws and these other things that are coming up just continue to push me further and further away from Canada. And this is where I'm from. I want to love this country, but our government does not understand what we're doing over here. The irony of this whole situation is that when they were having all the discussions during parliament, they brought a single YouTuber to come and empathize with the situation of what it's like to be somebody who makes a living 
on this platform as a content creator. And then they had 11 other people who are not YouTubers come in with their own interests to pass a law. How cool is that? To summarize, in the bill's current form, how it is right now, that means that Canada will have control over Canadians' viewing experience and it will impact creators' livelihoods. If you want to support this movement or have a voice in this, or maybe we can make a difference together, I'm going to leave a link in the description below, which is essentially a letter that will get sent out to all the MPs and the different people who work in government in our area to voice our opinion about Bill C-11. Now, if you're American, literally just throw in a, a random postal code. It takes two minutes and it could actually make a difference. Also send this to other big YouTubers, whether they're American or Canadian. So they're aware of this and that hopefully they can speak out too, because this bill impacts everything. I'd love to know your thoughts below. Uh, if you're a content creator or somebody who's from Canada or just someone who cares about Canadian content creators and what your thoughts on this bill are. And maybe if you have any thoughts on how we can make a difference, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please press like so that hopefully this message gets out to more people. Subscribe. I might do some more updates on this as we progress through the different news and you know, the changes in it, uh, as we go along and leave a comment, uh, all that stuff makes a difference for the algorithm. And in this case, this is the one video that I actually want pushed out. Thank you for watching. I love you. Bye. Could you feel my passion? Or is it just that I had two coffees and I didn't eat anything yet? And maybe I'm just like on edge. No, no, it's bad. It's not a, no, it's not that. It's definitely the, it's definitely the thing I talked about in this video. <laughs>